Today we're going to be swapping this 1999 Toyota Tacoma motor into this 1985 Toyota pickup truck. What we're going to be doing today is going through all the things that we need to get done to swap this into the Toyota pickup truck. We have a ton of parts here and we'll go through most of all of them. We got a resurfaced flywheel, we got a new clutch, we got all the seals to reseal the engine before we put it in the truck. We have a wiring harness. This wiring harness is from Offroad Solutions. They were a huge help on this project. Super knowledgeable people and I really can't thank them enough for hooking me up. We got the oil pan conversion. This turns your oil pan from a front sump to a rear sump so it'll clear the solid axle. A battery re relocation kit. We have motor mounts. We have ECU. We have wiring harness for the engine. We have water pump. We have spark plugs, wires. We have everything you need to refresh this engine before you throw it in your truck. Some of the benefits of a 3RZ swap include 150 horsepower. Um, that 3RZ engine is actually good for upwards of 3, 350 horsepower if you decide you want to put a turbo on it. It's very fuel efficient. Uh, the 22RE is also a fuel efficient engine, but this one, I gotta say, when you're running bigger tires and you got gears, this one's gonna be a little more fuel efficient just because it, because it is a newer engine with newer technology. Easiest way to get this project done is to get a whole donor vehicle and get every part you need from that donor vehicle before you start the swap. It'll be cheaper. You buy the whole vehicle, you can part out the whole vehicle when you're done with it and recoup some of your losses. And it just, it makes the swap really, really easy. Now that we've gone over all that, let's go ahead and dive in, get this motor resealed and get it ready to drop in the truck. off the alternator harness off and this thing is fairly stripped down and ready to get cleaned but definitely want to put a rubber band and some plastic over your intake any intake hoses anything like that you want to make sure it's really good and sealed because you don't want any water inside your engine so we're gonna go ahead and clean this we'll be right back boom we clean this thing up real nice um, use a little bit of degreaser we got this thing nice and cleaned off no oil no dirt no debris it's gonna fall in here when we do all these seals and gaskets first thing we're gonna do Switch the oil pan and get that to rear sump so it'll clear the solid axle on the 85 Toyota. And from there, we'll just keep moving forward, sealing this thing up and getting all the new parts on it. No flake, there's no shiny stuff in the oil. So it's looking really good. While we have the oil pan off, we're going to go ahead and tap the hole where the old uh, dipstick tube went. We're no longer going to be using this location. It's actually going to move around to the intake side of the block. So we're going to remove the dipstick, use a quarter inch MTP tap they supplied and a plug they supplied. So it'll be real easy. We'll go ahead and get that done right now. And then we'll continue on, make sure all the shavings are out of the oil galley and put the old pan on and the oil pickup. go ahead and get a punch, use this from the bottom, punch it out. You always want to put blue Loctite on almost everything you put back in, so dab a blue Loctite. This is the rear sump uh, oil pickup tube, so we actually need an extra 12 millimeter bolt because it has two mounting points up there. And we'll use the original bolts here. Uh, Offroad Solutions sent me all of this, including a new gasket, OEM Toyota gasket, so this can be really easy to put on. Got our hardware here, and then after that, we will go ahead and use the 
FIPG Toyota sealant. So we'll go ahead and go around the entire hole pan. Go ahead, go around every single hole. Don't use too much, but don't use too little. Make sure that we get everything good. We did a valve cover gasket, oil pan gasket, front main seal. We're going to do the rear main when we pull it off the stand. Uh, we got the new rear sump on there, the motor mounts, new oil filter. Got everything nice and ready so that we can swap this into the 22 e truck. We're going to have to put a couple of the sensors from the 22 e truck on this block. So we'll do that once we get the old motor out. But until then, we need to get the truck in here and pull the old motor out. We got this thing in the shop and uh, we've prepped the engine as far as we can take it right now. Next thing to do, make this engine bay have some room for a 3RZ. So go ahead and pull the 22RE out and get the engine bay cleaned up, give it a good power wash just because you can't be putting a nice clean engine in a dirty engine bay. <laughs> Oh,
last night, got the engine pulled, and we're about ready to slap this new engine in, which we're super stoked about. Um, we're gonna first go outside, give this engine bay a really good wash down, and just clean this up as best as possible. There's a lot of janky wiring that I'd love to get rid of. First things first, get this engine bay cleaned out and get this thing ready to start accepting the parts for the 3RZ swap. We got the engine bay cleaned out. A lot nicer in here, workable, not gonna get all gross, just touching stuff. And now we're going to start putting everything away where it needs to go, deleting what needs to not be here anymore, maybe cleaning up some of this wiring as well while the engine's out. Uh, we're going to start by taking the old ignition system out, pulling all the unnecessary wires, uh, tucking anything that we will not be needing anymore, and going from there. And once we have everything ready, we'll go ahead and install the new battery box, put the bill housing on, and uh, make sure the clutch line's going to work and really... We're getting really close to uh, putting the new engine in. Alright, let's get this bell housing swapped out. We need to use the bell housing from the 3RZ, the W59. So, off this one. Good to go, no leaks, this is gonna be great. Now we're putting on the plug. Went ahead and cleaned all the oil off these because you want the Loctite to work. Start spec on this is 19 and then 90 degrees. Pretty good sitting in that bay. 
bolted up to the trans, it's not bolted to the motor mounts, but they're in there in the correct location. Everything's clearing, we got a little bit of clearance everywhere. It's not a ton of clearance, uh, might have to move some of this stuff, EGR stuff, uh, we'll see. Definitely tight over there, but nothing we can't handle. Uh, we did have an issue, I messed up the pilot bearing installing it last night but i really wanted to make sure the motor fit so i put the motor in anyway so we're going to unbolt the motor pull the motor back out put the clutch back in get the motor back in and really get started on getting this thing super dialed we'll go ahead and delete the clutch line because it's now on the other side lots of work a little time to do it so we're going to keep this 3rz swap going uh, we got the off-road solutions battery tray over there we're about to put the wiring harness on we got the oil pan conversion done we got the motor mounts on uh, we need to get the fuel line hooked up, and then we need to get the extension for the fuse box hooked up. Other than that, that's all our off-road solutions parts, uh, and it made this swap really easy. So go give them a follow, go give them a shout. If you're looking to do this swap, or a 5EZ swap in your 3.0 or 22 ori car, hit them up offroadsolutions.com, or uh, just give them a call offroad solutions. They're awesome. I'll drop a link to their website in the bio below. Give them a shout. Tell them I sent you, Patrick from Elevated Overland. Something I just realized is this has been in a wreck and it was pushed backwards and this has crumpled quite a bit. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use a hammer to massage this back down. So it needs to go down. So we're going to give ourselves some clearance to the hood with the battery and fix that a little bit. So we're going to drill this hole and we'll be using a rib nut because rib nuts are awesome. It's the end of the second day on the swap and we are making some good, good progress. Okay. But we got the battery tray in. Got rib nuts for the top, did a through bolt for down there on the side. Uh, we've got the starter, it's not in, but we have the starter wiring figured out, the alternator wiring figured out. We need to remove this extra power steering reservoir because all the reservoir is here now. Uh, the three RZ's in, bolted in, it's got a couple bell housing bolts in, the clutch is on, all that's good. We just got the power steering line ordered, that'll be here in a couple days. Uh, fuel we have figured out, return we have figured out, we got a bunch of stuff figured out. The fuel return, there's the original return goes up around and through the intake to the fuel pressure regulator here. Oh yeah, the uh, fuel inlet, you can see right here, goes up over. It's gonna go where the old brake booster line went on this pinch weld. The brake booster, we have that figured out. So we, uh, we got a lot of the what ifs, uh, how's it gonna work? Got out of the way today. It's a new day, uh, cleaned up the shop a little bit. Everything's looking a little better. We are just going to attack this list one item at a time. We do need to build an intake. I ordered some three inch aluminum. I'll just build one. It'll come over to here with a cone filter. He had a cone filter before, so he's cool with that. And then we have a lot of looming. I'm just cleaning up this engine bay to do so.
We are going to go ahead and put this thing on the lift so I can do the bell housing bolts, the wiring that goes to the trans and stuff. We got some stuff to splice in here. We uh, got to get to work. All right, guys, so we're going to see some of the issues we're having. Stock exhaust over here. What we're dealing with over here. So we're going to have to come down and either do a cross over here we're gonna have to come behind the T case, shoot through there, and do a cross over here under the T case here. So whatever we do, it'll be a little bit of a challenge, shouldn't be too hard. I uh, just gotta make sure we stay out of the up travel. So it might be easiest just to come down here and loop right behind this and head on out. Um, but right now we're focusing on the wiring. Starter off the starter harness. All right, so here's our alternator starter harness. Uh, really, all we want out of this, we'll take the negative terminal for now. We're gonna take the plug for the alternator, and we're just gonna disassemble the whole thing, get it stripped down, and ready to use what we need to use out of it. Starter trigger, alternator, plug that goes into the 3RZ body harness. Negative panel, fuse box cable, which we will probably, or alternator, we'll probably use this for the original alternator. And this was the starter. So we'll see what we use and we'll see what we won't use. All right, what we're doing now is we're gonna go ahead and get the starter wired. So we got the positive lead to the starter. It reaches just perfectly to the positive terminal. Go ahead, starter trigger, get this plugged in. And we'll also get the alternator plugged in. We're going to actually be splicing the alternator wiring to the existing alternator wiring. And good old Toyota being Toyota, they use the same color wires for the last 40 years. So you just have to go color to color. You've got yellow, red, and white on both of these. And then this one has the starter trigger. This one has an extra ground we'll have to hook up. Probably cut it somewhere up here. I like, I like this slim, sleek look. So we got the alternator wired, spliced here. We'll loom this all real nice when we're done. We got the starter uh, trigger wire where it's going for now till we get the harness wire ran to it. And we have the starter ma main wire right here. So everything's reaching. Alternator's going here, which we will take to here or here. Uh, we'll probably take it to here so that when the heat changes for a normal battery and he doesn't have this, he'll still be able to utilize it. And now what we need to do, hopefully I didn't screw myself, we need to get the main engine harness on and it looks pretty tight back there. So hopefully I didn't completely screw myself on getting this harness on and we're going to try and get this thing on. So let's see what happens. Now we've got our off-road solution wiring harness and this is really where we're thankful that we went this route and we hooked this up because this is just so easy. So we're going to put this in the cab feed what needs to come out this side of the firewall, feed what needs to come out that side of the firewall, and other than that, it's all plug and play. It's just so easy. So we'll go ahead and feed this where it goes, and then we'll start running the wiring for the starter and the alternator.
Alright, so as you can see here, we got the wiring harness on. It was a total pain to get on. Um, I can't imagine doing it in the car. Definitely would not advise that. This was busted as most of them are, so I loomed it up with some nice loom, which made it look good. So this is all the wires secure and safe. So, go ahead and finally drop this in the car for the last time. Stab it there for the last time. We can uh, get it run sooner than later. Sometimes it really is quicker to do what seems like more work. So one thing we'll need for sure off the 22R is the oil pressure sender, especially if you have the SR5 model. So this is the oil pressure sender from the 22R E. The three RZs is right there. So it's right above the motor mount, right here. So we'll just take that one off, thread this one on, and everything's good to go. Now we've got the 22 RE oil pressure sender on there. We're gonna get the wiring for the old sender. We're gonna chop it off here. We're gonna splice on the new sender, er, the old sender. All right, so Nicholas is back and we started running the ORS, the Offroad Solutions wiring harness. Uh, super straightforward, there's instructions for this and so we're not gonna go over too much of it. Pretty much take dash part, put it up in here as nice and tucked and tightly as possible. Uh, so mount the OBD2 reader over there and shove some wires through each side of the firewall and mount your ECU. So, uh, pretty straightforward. When we're all finished up, we'll show you how we routed it. I finished the wiring for the most part. Uh, we're real close to being done with the wiring, and uh, essentially, I didn't want to bore you guys because if you're doing this swap, you'll know. Um, three, the off road solutions they send you install instructions on the harness, and it is just so easy to follow these. They got a few pages. Um, they have pictures even along the way for some things, diagrams, all sorts of stuff. So we got the wiring done. Uh, they send resistors if you need them. It's really simple and straightforward. So offer the solutions again, coming in clutch with uh, instructions there. So we just followed those instructions, finished those off. We got the battery box mounted, riv nutted, so it just bolts in real nice. It's clean. Really like this battery box. We got it a few inches lower as well waiting on a power steering line and a fuel union and pretty much that's everything that we need for this um, I do got to do the oil pump o-ring still that's almost uh, uh, that's here so I just need to get it done and then the front can go back together I got the plugs and wires or the plugs are in I got the wires for it uh, we have stuff here coming in today for an intake uh, custom aluminum intake it'll put the air filter right about here uh, what we're gonna focus on right now we need to get the throttle cable where it needs to go so pull this off one sec <clears throat> so essentially the throttle cable mount needs to be I don't know inch and a half this way so we're gonna use an eighth inch aluminum and just make a mount for it another place we need a bracket is over here to keep this up and away from the exhaust we'll use some more aluminum bend it make a bracket there we're, uh, we're moving along really nice so we're gonna focus today on getting the bracket for this done, the bracket for that, and one other bracket I already built but did not film because it was just easy. Is this uh, fuse bracket? These are the fuses, the EFI and the OBD for the Offroad Solutions harness they send you. I just built a little bracket here. That's done. Alternator wiring's dialed. Oil dipstick, all that stuff's done. We got the fuel line on. We're just waiting on a union. Clutch is on tight. Everything's good. So it's moving along really nicely, and we should be done here in the next. I don't know, we got probably 10, 12 hours on this thing. We gotta build an exhaust. Um, gotta put the radiator back in, hoses, put all the belts back on, uh, get that oil pump seal done. Time to get to work. Alright, we'll be using just some 8th inch aluminum. Go ahead and score a straight line.
the real test is to go test it out from inside the cab. Bent this out of eighth inch aluminum. We're gonna mount it down here where the old bracket for the wiring harness was. And we will now then we'll secure our wiring harness to this bracket. So we'll just go ahead and drill a hole and bolt it to the head. Alright guys, so we got this bracket on, zip tied on, so that's secure now. We got the throttle cable nice and secure now. And now we're going to work on the EBAT box. So we need a custom way to mount this thing. It'll have a cinching bolt back here, a really long one. That'll cinch the two straps on either side together. And there'll be a flange here and a flange here to mount to the fire or to the inner fender. So go ahead and get to work on that. I just bent this up real easy with the hammer and the two post, making a radius. So we'll go ahead and get the tabs welded on to mount it to the inner fender well and we'll get that long bolt in. inch aluminum intake piping and I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to just I also got some boots and it should just connect. Alright guys, so the idea here is pretty straightforward. That's going there. I'm gonna go ahead and weld this here. And then when that's welded there, I will also weld this so we can attach an air filter in there. And I think that's gonna be the best bet. So this will be our piece. And hopefully everything works out. So let's go weld this up.
so we got this intake done and it doesn't look half bad uh, there's one spot that gave me a little bit of trouble right here and I got some contamination in there but other than that looking good uh, tomorrow we'll get the uh, piece of plate I have here and make a bracket to support this and other than that the intakes pretty much done I need to pick up a couple weld on bungs because we gotta get this and this all past the mass airflow sensor so go ahead and do that and other than that she's looking great so we'll pick up tomorrow making I'm gonna grab the intake I got stuff I need to buy so I'm gonna grab the actual filter so I know I'm putting it in the right spot before I build a bracket for it we got her all welded up not the most beautiful welds but definitely far from the worst I've done uh, we got this and fitting for this uh, Compression fitting to this side, and then on the other side we've got a plastic fitting because that's all we can find. But it'll work. What we're going to work on today is finishing the intake. I need a bracket here so it's not just rattling around. And we're going to get the headers on. We got some, uh, what are these, pacemaker headers. Um, I wasn't sure if the original manifold would fit, so we need to get these on, mounted, and yeah, get that on. And the last thing we need to do is finish up the wiring inside the cab it's all ran i just need to get it tucked away routed and mounted for its final iteration oh also we got the uh high pressure power steering line in so that's sweet got the coupler for the fuel in so we should get the fuel done power steering done oh uh, we could put the front of the motor back together we did the oil pump seal really we're nearing the end of this so i'm stoked to get done with this thing and move on to the other project actually today i am having a three four swap dropped off three liter to three four swap so that'll be a whole nother mess of work and yeah i've got a lot to do so enough talking let's get to work all right we need to get this tucked behind Pretty much just crammed in there which is kind of unfortunate we got the fuses and or the fuse and relays up in here wiring right across and over there right under the e-brake you can see the obd2 reader so the dash wiring is pretty much wrapped up not a whole lot left to do there so we're gonna hop onto the exhaust because i do need to go buy a sheet metal brake to get uh some aluminum bent to mount up the intake so we're gonna pull the intake off pull the exhaust manifold off and slip the header on Hopefully it all goes smooth, because we do have EGR, and I hate EGR, so see how it all goes. Alrighty guys, lessons were learned here. Uh, pay setters do not clear. So we have stock manifold back on, ordered a stock manifold gasket, because the pay setter gasket is, it's cardboard, it's junk, I know it's going to fail. So ditch that, I will be getting a new uh, gasket tomorrow for this, it's coming uh, from Lubbock, Texas, so it'll be here tomorrow morning. They'll deliver it, get that done. But for now, since the pace setter's not gonna work, we're gonna go back to our original plan. Initially, I didn't think the stock downpipe would work because I had the wrong flange. The 22RE flange and the 3RZ flange are the same thing. They're just bent and sent a little, a little bit of a different way. So we're actually gonna be using this stock aftermarket downpipe. I'll be cutting it after this first O2 sensor and we will be turning it and crossing over under the transmission to get this exhaust routed. So we are done wasting time here. I've spent a lot of time on this already. So we're gonna get this thing up in the air and start building this exhaust. So let's get to work. 
All right, so we're under the car and here's what we're working with. That flange gonna come down and we're gonna go ahead and tuck it real close right here and then continue over here to uh, our existing exhaust. We have a cat in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld an O2 bung here for this O2 sensor. So we'll get an O2 bung welded on here and we'll get our existing exhaust to this. Uh, this was welded on for the old 22RE header. So I'll probably go ahead and give this a chop here so we can save that for what it's gonna use a header next. So enough talking, we'll get this bolted up, the downpipe. Oh, actually I probably have to cut it before I bolt it up. We'll get it up there and we'll get this cut and then we'll connect the two and we'll have an exhaust. Pretty, pretty simple, wish we would've went this way the first time, but we're here, round three. Got our trusty multi-piece uh, exhaust kit here. Free bank, easy to weld together. So, we got the crossover downpipe header thing done. Uh, welded it up there to the stock one, kept it as far away from this fuel rail as we can. We are gonna heat sleeve that as well anyway. Comes under the trans and goes on the right side. Gonna throw that catalytic converter in right here with the flange, so hopefully you can take the downpipe off and not have to pull the whole exhaust because it looks very inconvenient to have to do that. So we'll get that welded in over here and in the meantime, I am out of mid gas. I'm not the best TIG welder, especially in awkward positions, so I'm not gonna take that out all the way. But we're gonna drop this down, and I have one bracket to make for the intake. Then the intake's done, and I got the dash wiring done today. So that means dash wiring, intake, and exhaust are mostly done. I just need to get that mid gas uh, 7525 mix, and I can finish out the exhaust. And then the intake exhaust and in the cab wiring is all done, and that is my goal for today so let's go ahead and drop this truck down weld up just a little bit of aluminum and call it a day this is what we're working with this is our intake and it's floppy so when you make this not floppy what i did is i put the harbor freight press brake and it says it'll do 18 gauge but it definitely does two inches of aluminum with ease and this is eighth inch aluminum and it's gonna go Right there, mounted down there, and welded to our intake. So I'll go ahead and get it mocked up and show you guys what I found out. So this is what I came up with. Pretty simple, little L bracket welded to this. So now it's a lot more sturdy. Now we have got the intake done. This is done and dusted. Don't need to come back and revisit this again. Exhaust is not quite done, but the in cab wiring is done so almost everything i wanted to get done today got done i need to get some welding gas and i'll see you guys back here tomorrow i've been doing quite a bit without filming i'm sorry for that i'm gonna fill you in on what you missed it wasn't a whole lot built a crossover exhaust welded in a couple of two bungs one there one here i got the crossover done got the heater core lines on we'll drop this thing down and i'll show you what i did in the bay i got this bracket mounted i'm not sure if you guys saw that got the factory manifold back on because the headers would not work that was pretty unfortunate. Um, we did get radiator hoses going, and man, do they barely fit. But we got the upper on, got the lower on. We had to splice the lower with a dual-ended barb fitting and used a 3RZ uh, factory radiator hose, and we modified it quite a bit. So that's finally in there. Looks like it's gonna clear the fan and everything. Uh, we got fuel going. We did start it up for the very first time, started up well. Um, got the alternator built on, power steering built on. But one of the last things we need to do Got to take this instrument cluster apart because we need the tachometer to work. Right now, it's not working. So we're going to pull this apart, solder in a 10K ohm resistor, 
and then we are going to put it back together. It's just tachometer parts, so we'll pull this face off, pull these screws out, I think it's just these screws, and the tachometer itself will come out, so it's kind of a pain, but we'll get it done. I've been working all day just putting up small little things, you know, wiring here and there, fluids, battery cables, this and that. But the 3RZ swap is just about done. So I believe I have everything hooked up. It starts, it runs, Offer the Solutions did a killer job on their wiring harness. So all that's left to do right now is take it for a test drive. So that's what we're about to do. So let's pull this thing out of the garage, see how she runs. Last night, gave this thing a first startup. Did not go quite as planned. Uh, we had an oil leak, valve cover gasket, and we also had a pretty bad hesitation, which turned out to be mass airflow sensor. So we worked through both of those, which is weird because it didn't have the hesitation before the swap, but I guess the mass airflow sensor just sitting in the shop got too dirty, whatever happened. I cleaned it, didn't work, so we threw a new one in it. Uh, new used one, and it's good to go. But this is the uh, 1985 Toyota pickup 3RC swap, and she's just about done. She's running great now, took her over to my buddy's shop, uh, ripped it around. So now that it's running so good, we're going to go ahead and pull it in the shop, uh, make sure every little component's dialed, and I'm going to drive it home tonight, drive it back to work tomorrow, give it the good old 100 mile test. Yes, that is my round trip, 100 miles to and from work. But we're going to do that, make sure everything's good to go. And once I give it the 100 mile test, she's just about done. So we'll pull it in the garage, finish it up, and I'm gonna give you guys a once over of the finished product. So let's pull it in. All right, so underneath this, we didn't do a whole lot, but you can see the oil pan we swapped on. Um, other than that, we did make a custom crossover exhaust. So we just took the stock down pipe. Uh, we did order some headers for it, but it wouldn't clear at all. So we took the stock down pipe and welded on some two and a quarter, put no tube bung there. Under here, we heat wrapped up there and right here, because that's close to the engine and that's close to the fuel and brakes and the motor. So then we came across over here, through here, catalytic converter, post O2 bung, far enough away that hopefully we don't see an O2 code. And we do have a cat in here. Um, other than that, under here, it's pretty stock. We did have to mess with the steering dampener. It's probably not dampening as much as it could, but you can see we also had to shorten the coolant hose. Kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. Custom builds, custom coolant hoses, and other than that, that's about all we did under here, and it looks great. Um, I just lifted it up to make sure that we were done under here, and I do believe we are done under here. So, now we're done under here. Let's check up top. Once up top's done, we're gonna put the hood on this thing, and this thing is done. So up top, we did quite a bit. You guys saw we did a battery location, we got the EVAT box mounted, uh, custom bracket, we have it pinched here uh, with small thread up here, bolted here, bolted there, custom bracket there. Um, we did have to make a cl custom clutch line for the cl clutch master cylinder to the sleeve cylinder. Um, all new battery cables and I loomed them all, everything looks really good there, everything came out good. Uh, custom radiator hose, we had to shorten and modify one there. This is a stock 3RZ radiator hose, no big deal there. We custom made this intake here, so we got a cone filter. Uh, this is an oilless cone filter. Stock math, some 3 inch intake piping, which 
did a great job welding, I think. I'm not a very good proficient TIG welder, but I feel like I did pretty good with these. Uh, we have all the vacuum reference and all that good stuff. Heater core hoses were modified. Fuel line. We've got the off-road solutions fuel line. Um, we have the off-road solutions battery tray location. We have the off-road solutions motor mounts. Um, we got the oil pan kit from Off-Road Solutions. We got the wiring harness from Off-Road Solutions. I don't know if you can tell, but we got a lot of stuff from Off-Road Solutions, which really helped with this build. Um, moved along quite nicely. Then, like I said, we got the EVAP box here. Um, power steering. This Off-Road Solutions power steering hose. Alternator. We got that wired up. Everything's charging right with the alternator. Um, stock 3RZ starter. W59 bell housing. This thing. And, oh, stock radiator as well. So I do need to go get a new radiator cap. This one is no good. So go, go get a new radiator cap. We had to make a bulkhead for all of these electrical components over here because we have the winch box over here. We have the fuse box stuff over here. There's a lot of extra stuff that he already had wired over here. Um, so it made more sense to make a centralized 12 bolt over here rather than move everything and extend all the wiring over there. Other than that, man, this thing is pretty, pretty well done. Um, I just went through it in my head while I was telling you guys everything and I'm looking around making sure nothing looks weird out of place and in my opinion everything looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and put the hood on this thing and get this thing ready for its maiden voyage back to the house so that'll be 50 miles to the house and then 50 miles back to work tomorrow if it does that without a problem I'll go ahead and drive it to the customer's house the day after that so this is a 1985 Toyota pickup with a nice 3RZ FE engine. That's it for today. I'm going to go ahead, put the hood on the thing, take it home. Um, that's pretty much the 3RZ swap. I'm going to try and smash all this into one video. So it's probably a long video if you stay till the end, which I'm sure a few of you did because you want to watch how 3RZ swap works. Thank you so much. And next up is a 3-4 swap. We're going to be doing a 3 liter to 3-4 swap in a T100. It applies the same Toyota pickups, Toyota 4Runners. So if you want to watch that, stick around, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I appreciate it so very much. A lot of work goes into doing all this. Less work goes into filming because I'm kind of a lazy bastard, but I'm trying to get better. Your guys' support really encourages me to continue documenting this and just showing you what's up. So until next time, guys, thanks so much. And uh, see you later.